Okay. Um, this is my office for two and a half, four hours. Um, Today is my last day as a graduate assistant of Housing Systems and Technology at the Department of Housing and Residential Education at Purdue University, Um I feel like I've done a lot here, but um, I made the decision to leave this position when I realized that um, my career in game development couldn't wait any longer. So I decided to leave this position and start trying to find relevant work in game design even though I wasn't graduating yet. I graduate um, in about a year from now, about a year from last week. Um, so I feel like I've, you know, been helpful here. I've, I won awards for my work here, um, but at the same time, uh, it's more important to me to focus on the career that I want to have than the one that I've had up until now, because they're so different. Um, and even though that it is a technology role, a lot of what I do nowadays is more related to residence life and kind of policing our student body um, than it does with anything technology related. So. Um, I'm wrapping up today, and I'm trying to put into place um, the last bits of the processes that I'm going to have to leave behind uh, for other people to take over. But um, I wanted to take an opportunity to talk before I was actually officially out of this role about what my goals are for the next year and where I'm at, because it's really hard to measure how far you go unless you know where you're at. Um, and. Uh, I haven't done that yet, specifically, like spoken in specific terms about what I can do now, because I've been kind of scared to put that out there, because there's a lot of things that I'm uh, kind of not ready to admit on where I'm at right now, but um, if I'm going to make any improvements this next year that are going to be significant in any way, um, then I'm going to have to say where I'm at, and where I'm at isn't, isn't much. Um, I don't have a lot of relevant skills uh, for the position I want to have. I can work in the game industry, um, and I can, I can do a lot of different jobs, design-related jobs, computer-related jobs, thinking, administration, marketing, all of that stuff, but um, the specific type of um, direction that I want to have in my work, I don't have yet. And mostly that's in refining my skills in 3D modeling and design, animation, character rigging, lighting, um, special effects, you know, particle effects, things like that. I have knowledge of these things, but I'm far from at a, at a you know, working professional, um, you know, what I would expect to see from somebody on PolyCount or um, applying to these jobs on Game of Sutra that I really want, but probably am not yet qualified for. And the other thing is my level of programming is almost non-existent. I, I, um, well, we'll get to that in a second. But I've got, I've got some good, good feelings about programming, but I have yet to put the real, um, you know, the rubber to the road on it. Uh, so, the majority of my experience so far has been in Autodesk, Adobe product, products, um, and Unity. No, not even Unity. Unreal Game Engine, and I've played with Unity, but it's different enough for un from Unreal Development Kit for me to not really know what the heck I'm doing. So, this is where I'm at. Adobe 3D, or uh, Autodesk 3ds Max, Autodesk Maya, and Autodesk Mudbox. I can create models um, in any general shape, uh, starting from one uh, plane and working into a full model, or starting from a simple polygon and working into a full model. I can do all types of editing um, with with uh, pretty much low polygon models. But whenever I branch into high poly. I start running into difficulties that come from my lack of education when it comes to, uh, you know, art practice, specifically in character models. Uh, the character models that I've done have always lacked finesse because I am not a, um, a, a sketch artist. I'm not a traditional artist. Um, I have I I love what I do. You know, like when I draw or things like that, so I get some great effects, but. You know, when you're doing character models, you're drawing from life. You, you're studying um, muscles and bones and animation and how in physics and things like that. And I, 
I've been able to compare the models that I've made with professional models, and I've noticed that they know where the muscles are, they know where the spine is, they know where the where the brow is and how it hangs and where the wrinkles in the eyes normally form and things like that, and I don't because I haven't had that practice with sketches or, or, or traditional art. And that's one way, way I want to improve. Um, but I think a lot of that has to do specifically with uh, character modeling, because everything else you can build off of reference images, and I've, I've done that to a certain degree. I'm, I am competent in modeling, I am. Um, and level design is something that I would like to go into, but I've only ever done in Unity, or sorry, not Unity, uh, UDK, Unreal Development Kit. Um, for a project in school. So Unreal is something I want to get more familiar with over the semester. Unity is something I want to work in uh, next, or over the summer. Unity is something I want to work on next semester in one of my independent projects, or independent studies. But um, level design is something that I have always been interested in with things like RPG Maker and um, the Elder Scrolls, um, I can't remember what it's called, but the uh, the TES kit, um, the creation kit is called on Skyrim, but I haven't used the Skyrim one yet. I've used the Morrowind one, um, and not so much, so I've used the Morrowind one. Um, and other types of map builder things, like for a long time I hated Halo, um, but I loved Halo 3 and on because they added a mode where you can actually edit the maps, and Halo Reach became my absolute favorite thing in the whole world. I started submitting maps to competitions because I really liked designing gameplay, and I liked designing game flow, and I liked designing balance and start points and how these interactions would happen, and I got to do some pretty creative stuff, and I enjoyed it a lot, um, especially when it got to the point where you were pushing the bounds of what was possible. Um, like, uh, for instance, Halo 3, you had to set things and they followed gravity, so if you trick the level um, and, and load times, you could place an object where it intersected with another object, and the two would not interact with each other physically. So you could create unique environments that were based on, um, you know, kind of tricking the engine. And, you know, unique elements to the level, like doors that opened, or elevators, or bridges that extended. And those were the things that I liked to do. Um, you know, turning a square space into what felt like a long space by just doubling it back on each other and using teleportation or something like that. But, you know, that's what I did for fun. That was when all I was caring about was playing a game. Now I want to take something like that and build things like what you find in the creation kit from Elder Scrolls, or from Bethesda, which are procedural maps and how those things work together and, and getting um, you know, a feel. And, and I want to be able to design those kits and then implement those kits in a level because both of those things sound incredibly fun. Um, I don't know, I, I get really excited talking about that, but that's just level design. Um, I want to go into game design, and game design is more than just levels and characters and models, it's the player experience, and part of that you achieve through narrative, which I'm familiar with, obviously my degree was originally in communications at the, uh, at the undergraduate level, and so I got a lot of experience with journalism and creative writing and script writing, um, you know, even submitting one of them to BEA because that was part of one of my classes, which is um, National Competition in Los Angeles. Um, but the, the, the part about game design that makes all of that just a minor point is that it relies heavily on coding. And I understand what coding is, and I've taken two classes in Java almost ten years ago, so I understand what data structures are and classes and programs and how that all works together, and um, when you need a loop and when you need an array and when you need an energy or when you need a float and when you need a double, whatever it is. But to actually use that in C++ C slash C++, um, which is what a lot of the requirements are for a game program or positions, you know, it's kind of a stretch for me um, at the moment. So I want to specifically learn how to utilize that type of code and um, make some of these rules work. But in addition to that, you have um, you know, other types of in-engine programming, which are things like Kismet, which uh, in UDK is kind of like the equivalent to like an RPG Maker Switch. Where all you're really you're not actually writing the code, but you're you're thinking in code. So if you take a, an item that is you know uh, this is a uh, switch, you know, and the input is a trigger volume. So you put a you put an actual volume in a level. The le the volume returns a value whether or not there is someone in the in the volume, and if there is, it returns to that switch to change a value on output, and that value 
um, could be just like a boolean, true or false. And the true or false boolean could be referenced in another location, which causes something else to happen, like a door to open or enemies to come in, whatever it is. So you're, you're thinking in code, but you're actually drawing it visually. It's really cool. Um, for things that are not just simple, you know, already thought of things in an engine, that's where you want to go to code and make something unique, which is the whole point of designing gameplay in the first place, is to create something unique for me. Um, board games are something that I've been way into, something that I've done for myself for a while now. I have six of them um, that, to a different to different degrees, are complete and play-tested. All of them have been play